pasture, run them in the pen, work them on the Sundays, do it all again, race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. You made it back again. Why? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. Only one knows is Corona themselves. That's Rona. Uh, we got stuff today. A lot of stuff's happening. Some folks right here we're going to talk to. We got stuff around the globe as usual. Uh, rodeo news, some big rodeo news happened with the American. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we were going to have them on, but as you know, with that news breaking, they are everywhere. So we'll probably catch them, uh, catch them next time. But I'll get, to, I'll get to that story uh, later to let you know what's going on. The American is still going to happen. It's going to be a little different, but we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're also going to talk about the uh, women's professional bull riders. We've got one that's going to be in here talking about what they're doing, what they got coming up. So that's going to be some good stuff. Uh, great video from our friends Doc West Band. They got a new video out. We're going to show you. So check it out. Uh, cow stuff. We got cow news coming up. We got some sales. The Red River Horse Sales got a big sale going on this weekend. The 25th, 26th. Equipment sale Saturday. Catalog Horse Sale Sunday. Be there. Check it out. I think I'm going to go out there Saturday. They got some stuff in the equipment auction I need to look at. So I'll be over there checking that out. Uh, Austin, Texas, Rodeo Austin, Extreme Bulls in the ballpark. They're going to buck bulls in the ballpark again this year. We're going to tell you about that. Uh, some good old odd news that everybody likes. Uh, I guess some some sheep on the lamb, some beer you probably can't afford. It's illegal in 15 states. I'll tell you about that in a dog wedding. I don't know. I, we'll, we'll tell you about it when we get to it, but I, I don't know. And then uh, Halloween's coming up. So we've got the new trailer for the new Halloween movie. We're going to check that out today. Uh, and then we've got, uh, the waffle mat. Those of you out there want to know about the waffle mat. We're going to show you a short, uh, clip about that. And then we're going to discuss it. Many people ask us what makes a waffle mat foundation different. First, all a typical waffle mat foundation requires is a level pad. No pre-soaking is necessary and no in-ground ribs or deepened footings in the interior are needed. Second. A series of waffle boxes, eight and a half inch tall, 19 by 19 inch void forms, are placed throughout the footprint of the building pad following the engineer's design. And since the waffle boxes are primarily void and occupy only about 20% of the contact area, 80% of the swell experienced by alternative slabs are mitigated with the waffle mat. Third, post tension cables are then placed in the channels created in between groups of waffle boxes. And as opposed to alternative slabs, the clips used to connect waffle boxes also serve as supports for the reinforcing steel, meaning each cable is placed perfect and to the engineer's specifications. Fourth, a concrete top slab, usually four to five inches in height, is placed over the waffle boxes in steel, creating a post-tension mat slab where the waffle boxes allow for movement of expansive soils and mitigate the upward pressure on the slab. Constructability of a waffle mat slab is on par with the ease and quickness of a uniform thickness foundation, yet it possesses the greatest floor stiffness of any system in its class. These qualities are the reasons why, since its first installation in 1993, the waffle mat foundation has been used in over 25 million square feet of single and multifamily residential and light commercial structures across the USA, all without a single reported structural failure. If you are looking for a foundation system for use in expansive soils that delivers superior performance and cost savings, please visit www.wafflemat.com or call us at 925-683 2739. So do that. Waffle mat. Check that out. If you you know, right now the housing market's going crazy. Everybody's building houses. Everybody's moving. And you're, you know, looking into uh putting your house up, you're like, hey, 
let's try with the waffle mat. And with that, I don't know mm -hmm. a lot about the waffle mats. Um, I'm guessing they come in all colors. You can probably get blue ones if you want, but don't Google it. Barry's here to tell us about that. Hey, Pepper. Thanks for having me on. So tell us about the waffle mat. Yeah, the waffle mat, you might think of it as the next evolution in post-tension foundations. And uh, the reason it was developed, uh, like you saw in the, in the videos, for expansive soils. The, the soil is nasty. You know, in the yeah. summertime, it dries out and gets big cracks in it. In mm -hmm. the rainy season, it gets wet and swells up. And you put a foundation on top of that, and the foundation is going to move. And, of course, you know, Texas is number one in the nation for foundation repair because of that. So. Yeah. Uh, we, we started marketing Waffle Mat uh, this year in Texas to help solve that problem. And people have been trying to solve that problem for years. Different yeah. foundation designs. What can we build that will right. withstand the movement in the soil? Because yeah. uh, the last thing you want is you don't want cracks in your sheetrock and your brick and your doors stick and your windows won't open. Uh, so we've developed a structural engineered foundation based on the plastic cartons that we put on the ground that absolutely eliminates the movement from the soil. So, you know, the last thing you want is moving your house and 10 years from now, you got to have foundation repair. Yep. It's expensive and very damaging to your foundation. And so uh, we've been building these things on the West Coast for 30 years. We haven't had a single foundation repair. So it's good, good product. Yeah. I mean, and, and what's the, what was the technology behind that to, to they come up with to figure out that that's, you know, what to go with as far as, because like you say here in Texas, you got, depending on where you're at, you're either going to have swamp. If you go south, you're going to have swampy soil. Mm -hmm. You go West gonna be dry, mm -hmm. hot. You go north up here, and like up here, you've got uh, you're gonna have rock. You got sandy loam. Or if you get out east Texas, kind of where I'm at, you run into that black land. That clay. And you get the, yeah, you got clay, and yeah. then you hit that black land. That yeah. black land in the summertime, when it gets hot, you you walk out in the pasture, and you just fall down in a hole. Yeah, because I mean that's because it separates. It, it yeah. cracks so it big. Sure does. You you'll just fall right in, and nobody find you. Yeah. So with this this waffle mat. You're saying that whatever soil type you're in, it's going to adjust to the soil conditions you have. Yeah, we developed it specifically for expansive soils. It'll work on any soil. Mm -hmm. uh, but for expansive soil, about 80% of the foundation is not on the ground. So we right. developed these boxes that, that you put on the ground, scatter all these boxes all over the ground, mm -hmm. pour the concrete on top of that, keeps concrete up off the ground. They're Essentially, they're a void carton. But it's okay. a patented system with post-tension cables in it. You know about yeah. post-tensioning. Yeah. So we've got the structural steel in there to make it strong. And if you were to, the reason it's called waffle mat, if you were to flip your foundation upside down, mm -hmm. I don't recommend you do that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But if you were to flip your foundation upside down with a waffle mat, that's what it'd look like. It'd look like a waffle because it's got all these beams crossways, both directions and cartons in between. So on the, when it sits on the ground, as the ground moves, it doesn't affect your foundation. So that big hole that you might fall in back yeah. on the backside of your ranch, yeah. your foundation is not going to fall in that. Okay. So by looking at that... <clears throat> So by looking at those videos of those sitting on, so they just sit on the ground. So you're not out there digging trenches. That's right. Putting your cables in. You just. Everything's above the ground. Clean the ground off. Yep. Knock out the vegetation. Yep. Sit on the ground and just go. Yeah. Simple as that. The foundation contractors love it because, <laughs> you know, think how much, you know, digging in this yeah. dirt in the summertime is yeah. tough work. And uh, trenchers help, of course, but you know, right. there's a lot of hand digging goes in there. But you just scrape soil with a bobcat mm -hmm. and get it get it level, nice and level. And then you put these cartons out and you pour the foundation right on top of that. No digging in the ground. And those those foundation diggers are going to be mad at you. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch of them that, that you know, they, they wake up in the morning thinking, okay, am I going to do a regular foundation today yeah. or am I going to do a waffle mat? They yeah. much prefer to do a waffle mat foundation. Oh, yeah. They're going to get to beer 30 a lot quicker with oh, a yeah. waffle mat foundation. That happens. So where, what areas do you service? What Are you global? Or are you North Texas here in Dallas? Or what's your coverage area? Our, our product has been installed coast to coast and border to border, Canada to Mexico. Uh, we primarily service the West Coast and Texas, but we will deliver anywhere. We manufacture in three different places around the nation and one place in Mexico. And so we can actually ship our cartons anywhere. We've done uh, dormitory buildings in North Carolina and we've done hotels in Hawaii. So we can service anybody that needs to put a waffle mat foundation in. And quite frankly, we're hoping that people all over the nation will start using this product because it finally solves that problem with, you know, how do we build a foundation that won't move, won't crack, yeah. and won't have, to have, won't have to be repaired 20 years from now. Right. And what about, uh, how does it stand up as far as in the coastal regions? You know, you got uh, tropical storms, stuff like that. So how does that set compared to your, your other foundations? Yeah, well, the one thing good about a foundation that's on the ground, you know, slab on the ground, it's mm -hmm. going to withstand qu quite a bit of damage. A uh, hurricane can come through, tornado can come through, blow a house off, the foundation is still sitting there. Yeah. You got those foundations that are up above the ground like they have down on the coast because you got mm -hmm. the coastal tidal waves that come in and all that, and those are subject to damage from a hurricane. But anytime you pour a foundation straight on the ground, typically it's going to be able to stay there through any kind of weather. Okay. All right. 
And so if they uh, if they're trying to figure out where to get these, then when they, when they go set put, do these foundations, do do you have to specifically go out there and set these up, or how does that work? Do so they just order them, or how does yeah, it work? Yeah, good question. So uh, we we manufacture the product. It's a patented mm -hmm. system. And we sell it to the foundation contractor or to the builder, either one. And then we have people that will go out and train you on how to put it in. And it just takes about an hour's worth of training to learn how to install it. And, of course, an engineer engineers it just like any other foundation. Right. So if you're going to put any kind of post-tension foundation in, it's got to be engineered by yeah. someone that's qualified to do that. Uh, so same thing happens with a waffle mat. So you go to wafflemat.com, get in touch with us, mm -hmm. send us your plans. We'll have an engineer engineer it for you. And then we'll ship the product wherever it needs to go. And then we've got people, if it's your first time, you've never done one before, you're a contractor, you're a foundation contractor or a builder, uh, we've got project managers that will come out and spend a day with you getting it set up and help okay. you learn how to do it. Now, does it come, do they come pre-cut for that foundation or are they, do they cut them when they're there? Or is it, is it, do they go engineer it, get the design for the house, send it to you, you pre-cut everything, send it to them or is it, how does that work? Yeah, so good question. Uh, these boxes are 19 inches square. Okay. And so they, they, they hook together in groups of four. So it makes a 38 inch by 38 inch group of four when you connect them together. There's a bunch of clips and things that connect them, real simple plastic clips connect them together. So they'll stay where they're at, but they don't have to be engineered for each foundation. So the, the structural engineer will lay them out so they fit on your foundation. Mm -hmm. So we just put the number that it takes to do your foundation and they'll fit just about any foundation that you want. Huh. Okay. That's easy enough. Yeah, it's adaptable. <laughs> yeah, we can do it. Yeah. You got a foundation, we can make it work. Yeah. That's easy enough. All right. So before you get out of here, uh, where is the best place for the folks to go look you guys up and find out about getting uh a waffle foundation? Yeah, simplest thing is wafflemat.com. We've got videos on there. We've got uh, white papers on there, instructions on how to do this. And, of course, we've got a contact page on there where you can get a hold of us. And uh, we're happy to spend all, all day long talking with you about it. Okay. All right. Well, check them out. Waffle Mat. Go get one. If you're, you know, if you're building a house, the house market is great right now. People are building new houses. Uh, you want a good foundation, especially if you're up here in North Texas, when it's hot, hot in the summer and cold in the winter. So check out the waffle mat and get one of those in your next new home. The cowboy life is about tradition. We are self-reliant and answer to no one. Yes, mom. Can you tell your mom I said hi? Welcome to Radiator Ranch. There's a lot to learn from our way of life, so you may as well learn it from the best. The one and only, Dale Brisby. Whew. Through social media, I brought our traditions into the future. Now I'm bringing them to you. He worked harder than he ought to, so it's my obligation to work less. We're training the next generation of cowboy here. And when you're working on Radiator Ranch, you're my responsibility. Rodeo time, Chicho. You ready? Rodeo, Rodeo, Rodeo. I haven't had this much fun since a buy one, get 10 free Taco Tuesday. I'm the first female intern, and I'm a bull rider. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. She's actually more cowboy and tougher than all of us. Smell that arena dirt? It's rodeo season. It's manure, too. It's part of it. Are you crying? It's a circle of life. I appreciate Mother Nature. If you don't, then you ain't no cowboy. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. If you're not a cowboy, go step in here. It's all about good TV, Netflix. It's always about good TV. If you haven't watched it yet, it came out. We told you about it last last time you were here with us. We told you about it. There's six episodes. Go watch it. It's good stuff. It's funny, educational, informative. So go watch and you'll learn because everybody wants to be on Yellowstone nowadays. They just want to go to Fort Worth and play cowboy. Well, the best thing to do is go watch how to be a cowboy, learn what to do. And then you'll just step right in there like you got a gray mustache. So check it out and do that. We got some cow stuff for you right quick. Uh, cow stuff is happening. Let's do the PRCA rodeo right quick. Let's do this. Uh, the Black Gold Stampede Rodeo. BlackGoldStampedeRodeo.com. Look this up. It is October 15th and 16th. It's going to be in Henderson, Texas. PRCA Rodeo, there is a lot of vendors going to be there. It's in Henderson at the Ru Rusk County Youth Expo Center. Uh, Cowboy Alley opens at 530. There's plenty of vendors, food, and fun. There's also snow cones, so go get a snow cone. Uh, there's a mechanical bull. There's pony rides, petting zoo, mutton busting. If you got some youngsters who want to mutton bust, uh, Pete Carr is going to be out there. 
and cast scramble. Do it. Tickets twelve bucks in advance, fifteen at the gate. Uh, kids are five. Under four are free. Get your tickets at Boot Barn, or you get them online at DirtRoadTickets.com. That's coming up. Uh, the American. That's what I was going to tell you about. The American. It is. Golly, what I do with it? That's what happens when I got too many papers? All right, here's what happened. Uh, Te Teton Ridge. Teton Ridge acquired the American, and uh, they pledged to make it the world's premier Western culture event. So this is what happened. Teton Ridge is an emerging brand dedicated to promoting and preserving America's iconic Western cultures and cowboy-inspired sporting events. So they acquired the American. Uh, if you know about the American, Haps at and Stadium, every year it's a great rodeo, a great event for all fans and competitors. Big money's there. If you want to know more about this, you can uh, go to pepperstewart.com, click on the... Uh, press releases, articles, whatever link that is, and you can read this in detail. One of the uh, high notes of this deal is they are going to have, for the first time in event history, this is going to take place at the American, for the first time in event history, women's breakaway ropers will be eligible for $2 million in uh, added money. So go check that out and look it up on the website. Uh, we told you about the sale coming up at Red River. Be sure to check that out this weekend. Red River Horse Sale. If you go on their Facebook page, you can see all the stuff that they've got for sale. So be sure you check that out on uh, Facebook, Red River Horse Sale. Look that up. Uh, what we're going to do right now, we're going to throw out uh, a new new to you video from our friends at Doc West Band. Doc West Music. They've got a new video out. We're going to throw that out to you. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some bull stuff. I heard you heard your friends, they told me so. That's why I'm calling I've got a feeling He's left you all alone and Just say the word Yeah, babe We'll take that leap of faith Oh, there's no need to worry Yeah, there's a cowboy on his way There's a cowboy
Bull stuff. We're talking about it. Talking about bull stuff. And that is the women's professional bull riders. I don't know anything about it, but I know somebody that does, and that's Crystal, and she's here to talk about it. Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> so tell us about it. What is the, world, what is the women's professional bull riders? Well, uh, it started off as a group of women who needed a chance to succeed in bull riding. And uh, since then, it's actually came a long way to that, to... Um, giving opportunity to the young girls that have nowhere else to go after the junior bull riding associations. Mm -hmm. So we we're providing that opportunity for success and somewhere else after junior shows. Okay. So where did you start? What happened? Where did you start out? Because uh, I guess the first time I seen you was back in the old days, uh, the Gary Lefebvre bull riding school at Greenville. And I was up there working bulls. And I think you were in the school. I was. And so what happened that you said, you know what, I'm just going to go ride bulls. <laughs> well, I, I was 10 years old and I was sitting on the, the bench watching the rodeo at Charlie Thompson's in Lubbock, Texas. And my dad was like, hey, you want to do that? You know, he's just kidding. Uh, he wa we watched this kid come out on a steer. And then uh, the next show, we watched a girl come out on this, the steer. And then, um, I don't know, I just perked up whenever I seen these kids riding these smaller bulls. And I was like, whoa, they're, they're cool. My dad was like, you want to do that? And I was like, yeah. He goes, really? And next weekend I was signed up and I covered my first deer and I was hooked ever since. I didn't really start riding until I was 12, but um, from that first one, I was just, I was hooked. <laughs> And, and what's some of the, what's some of the, I guess, the trials and, and tribulations that you go through from riding? Because, you know, everybody gets to the point, they want to ride, they start riding, you're going to have, you have things in between. So what, what kind of drives you to just keep going? Well, uh, whenever I first start riding, I, I just loved it. And I did, I did really good because I was having fun and I loved it. And then the older I got, the more life came in, you know, like school, friends, mm -hmm. wanting to do other things. And then after graduating high school, I started working, which kind of like pushed bull riding away. But I was unhappy and I was like, you know what? I need to make a move because I want to ride bulls and I'm wasting my time. So I moved away from Lubbock and moved to the Dallas area and I just started riding bulls. And then from there, I wasn't doing very well and I was really... It was a heartache, you know, like, because I, I was like, am I supposed to do this? Am I meant to do this if I'm not riding anything? And so I took a few months off, and then I uh, ended up moving to Greenville, and I started at the, the ministry, and I didn't do too very well. But uh, the more I kept going, the better I was getting, and I realized, like, hey, you can do this. You can still do this because yeah. there's opportunity here now, yeah. and um, there's opportunity to learn and grow. And so basically it was just like overcoming the mental aspects of, hey, you're not staying on anything. Are you really supposed to do this? And then overcoming that and actually staying on to riding better bulls than I was back in 2017. And uh, I think that's where I mentally became stronger because now I'm riding the better bulls in 2021, you know, <laughs> well, well, that's <laughs> and, that. and I'm starting to win. So, yeah. and, and that's it. There's, there's a lot of people don't, they realize, you know, there's, there's the physical part of it, but there's the mental part of it. And the mental part plays a whole lot bigger part than the physical. It's most of your physical stuff is, is training and reaction. Yes, sir. But the mental part is what gets, <laughs> yes, gets sir. a lot of people. Yes, sir. I mean, I train, every day of the week you know and what really like messes with me is my mental game and i i worked so much on that that it's gotten better but i can ride all the bulls in the practice pin and then i'll go to the show and i fall off one i should have rode but that's because my mental mm -hmm. you know but now it's getting to the point where i'm confident in the shows now and i'm getting closer and closer each time too so yeah and so much closer that 
you ended up in Colorado checking out the uh, the, the PBR training facility. Yes, sir. We, got, we got to go up there and do a tour, I guess, a couple of years ago. We were in Colorado for some stuff and got to go tour the facility and meet with them, look at everything, check it out. But you got to go up there and play around. So how did that work out? Uh, it was fun. I mean, uh, I'm very blessed to have the people and the family and the support system that I have. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to go. Um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to learn the physical stuff because mm -hmm. I, I can ride bulls. I know what it takes to ride bulls, but I don't know what it takes to get that muscle on. I'm a small person, so <laughs> um, I wanted to learn that, how to build muscle and how to become stronger. And so I went up there for that, and I wasn't going to enter the the event that yeah. they're having but my mother-in-law convinced me she was like well why'd you come here i was like yeah. well i told her why <laughs> but she was like you have to do it and i was like uh all right then i'll do it and so i ended it up and i ended up taking third and i got a check so yeah. it, it worked out and i was i'm very thankful for her pushing me to do that well that's what it's all about so what did you learn while you were there what did they teach you as far as training and things that that you didn't know or that you needed to work on well, there's uh, this medicine ball that you get on and you've got to balance, which I've seen it before, but I never trained on it because I didn't really know how to and I didn't want to create any bad habits from just doing something because everyone else is doing it. Right. And if I didn't have the knowledge, then I'm not going to do it. Um, but they trained me how to how to use that tool, you know, so I learned how to do that. And then also uh, <laughs> strengthening bands. How to use those and impl implement them in the workout and yeah. strength training. And it's a lot of more control, not doing things too fast, just going slow and building that strength. Yeah. Um, bull riding muscles is what they like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's a, that facility, when I went up there and was walking through that place, I was like, this, if, if you need to work out and you've ever want to work out in your life, this is a place to go. They had everything. They had everything. the pools. They had the cool tanks, the hot tanks, the stuff hanging off the ceilings. They had a, <laughs> they had a, uh, what's the one thing I was looking at that they had was like a, an exercise bike, but they mm -hmm. put you in a suit. Mm-hmm. I was like, what in the world is I, this? I've seen that. Yeah. Like, I think a, it's. An astronaut on a bike? What, is that? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I actually didn't get to use that one. Uh, I'm not sure how that one works, but <laughs> I asked her, and it says she said that the lady, the physical, mm -hmm. um, physical uh, athletic trainer, is okay. what they have there, and um, it goes up around your waist and it fills with water. So you're basically running in water. I think is what she said. Yeah, it's like a water suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're you're running in water, you know. <laughs> It was cool. It was cool. Uh, I love the hot and cold tubs. Um, whew, <laughs> that cold tub is cold, but it really works on your body. Like, yeah. like my hips were so sore this last time I went in August. I went in May and I went in August, and then um, I really pushed myself to get in the cold tub. That cold <laughs> tub, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was, it helped though. Helped a lot. Uh, I will pass on that. If, it, <laughs> if it's not eighty degrees, I'm not getting in anything. There's no way that I'm getting in that tub. So let's talk about this uh, this World Professional Bull Riders. Now you've got a there's a tour going on. I think you just had an international event. So yes, how is how is that? I guess expanding for for more women to get an opportunity. Well, I know there's a bunch of uh, Brazilian ladies that ride, and there's a bunch of Mexico ladies, and there's a few in Australia and Canada, and I just see something there, like, that those other girls don't have the opportunity for, mm -hmm. and if we got, like, an international tour going, that would provide opportunity for them to succeed as well, you know, not just the USA, and that's what we're aiming at right now, um, to give opportunity to all the women out there to succeed and not only the women but the young girls like they see us whenever i was a kid i didn't see anyone a woman riding bulls and so i didn't know i was like well i just keep riding with the guys or the junior <laughs> shows i yeah. guess i didn't think about it mm -hmm. but now that i'm older i'm sure those girls were like well after this what am i going to do yeah you know so we want to provide that opportunity for them okay and so those looking for it where can they find it what what shows, uh, this, what's the season? Is the season still running, still going? You got shows coming up? or We've got finals in October from October 7th to the 9th. It's going to be four rounds, um, and it's in conjunction with the WCMB, uh, World 
ch uh, Championship Miniature Bull Riders, and that's going to be held in Mesquite, Texas, at the Mesquite Arena. Okay. And um, theirs is actually for from the fifth to the ninth, I believe. And there's a bunch of young girls there. Uh, check us out, October seventh to the ninth, and then the the miniatures are going to be October fifth to the ninth as well. And they start at nine a.m. Okay, and uh, is there a website? Is there a Facebook page? Are people watching like, hey, I want to, I want to enter this, or I want to be part of it, or maybe I want to sponsor an event? I mean, where do they go to contact someone? Definitely go to the Women's Professional Bull Riding um, dash WPBR on Facebook. You can contact us there, and there's a, a phone number there as well. It's should I give the phone number? Yeah, they want to call. It, it, it's it's nine zero three four one three four three four eight. You go ahead and give us a call if you want to enter, if you want to sponsor, if you just want to find out some more information like the schedule for twenty twenty two. But as of right now, twenty twenty one is just about up. Okay, all right, and that's Krista with the Women's Professional Bull Riders. Check it out. Watch her go spur some bulls, pick up some checks. Yes, sir. You, know, you can have enough. You can never have enough buckles. No. Put them everywhere. I got them everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. So we appreciate you visiting with us on that. And let's check out the uh, Bulls in the Ballpark. Thank you, Pepper. All right, so check it out. Bulls in the ballpark. Good stuff. Going on to Austin. Did it last year. Doing it again. Check it out. And uh, we were talking about Yellowstone earlier. Yellowstone uh, season four is coming up. We told you before, November 7th, going to be two episodes back to back. We've got the trailer for you to feast your eyes on. So check this out. And when we come back, we'll talk about some cow stuff because we have cow stuff, right? Cow stuff for you everywhere. Just don't step in it, especially barefoot. Don't step in your cow stuff barefoot. Don't. Unless you're trying to uh, cure athlete's foot, then do it. And take a picture because I want to say if you do that. So, uh, Waylon, Waylon, yeah, Waylene Davis, Waylene Davis is going to be on here in a little bit. Uh, you seen her on Road to the Horse. She competed in Fort Worth. We're going to talk to her uh, here briefly about what she's got going on stuff. But uh, yeah, Yellowstone season four coming up. Check it out. Hey, you're John Dutton, aren't you? Yep. Uh, that's not mine. It's addressed to you. Wait, I don't know what that is. Don't. Don't you die on me now. I like this. You hear me? Oh my god. What's happening? I don't know. Just get to the bunkhouse. Fair. Moral. Those are words men invented to scare and shame other men from taking back what they've stolen. Oh what about right or wrong? <laughs> Yellowstone two-hour premiere event, Sunday, November 7th at 8, exclusively on Paramount Network. All right, go watch it. Good stuff. Check it out. Speaking of cow stuff, uh, I think you have it as Cattle 3 over there. Uh, the RFID program... They've been talking about this forever, trying to get this going. 
Uh, the Texas Animal Health Commission has received a limited number, limited number at no cost, of the RFID tags, which is your radio, radio frequency identification ear tags from the USDA to distribute to Texas accredited veterinarians and cattle producers for use in replacement breeding cattle. Uh, the complementary RFID tags are to be used as an alternative to the silver metal bright tags or the orange metal official calf hood vaccination tags. Uh, Texas credit are, investigate, are interested in, okay, if you're interested in ordering these tags at no cost, uh, you can submit your request to the Texas Animal Health Commission Animal Disease Traceability Department beginning Monday, January the 11th at 8 a.m. Why 8 a.m.? I guess they open at 8, so they don't want you to call them before they're open. I don't know. Uh, what are some of the stipulations on this is going to be? You got to be a Texas accredited veterinarian. What's a tech? What's an accredited veterinarian? I want to know. And what's an accredited cattle producer? How do you become Texas accredited? I need to know about that. Uh, these tags are only intended for use in replacement stock. Two types of tags are available. The white button tags and the orange calf hood vaccination button tags. Both tags are low frequency. Veterinarians may receive both tags. Why cattle producers will only receive the white tag. Uh, currently, no ultra high frequency tags are available through this program. Tags are ordered in bags of 100 and will be made available for pickup at the regional offices. So they're not even going to mail them to you. Uh, the RFID tag inventory may include more than one bag of tags, so you might get two bags. Uh, a specific brand can't be requested. You're gonna, if it's free, you take what you get. It's free. Take what you can get, right? Uh, to place your order, contact their office by phone or email them, and uh, they will hook you up with your RFID tags. Tag them. I know years ago uh, we were talking about uh, Agex tags. I was using Agex tag, which is kind of the same thing. So they're they are uh, pretty good. Do we are we fishing over there? We got one on the line. You caught one. Mm -hmm. You caught one. Oh. Looks like we caught one. So we're going to jump into horse stuff. We're going to talk about some horse stuff. So let's jump into this. Uh, if you watched Road to the Horse and you enjoyed that, well, we're going to tell you more about that because we got Waylene Davis right here. What is going on? Hi, how are you? I'm great. I'm fantastic. How are you guys doing? Uh, we are doing good. Just uh, hanging out, talking about, talking about stuff. Well, good. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you were here recently, I guess, over in Fort Worth for the Road to the Horse. So you want to kind of tell us how that all came about and how that went for you? Yeah. So Road to the Horse is essentially a competition that showcases up and coming trainers or those who are within the industry. And it's a cult starting competition. And so they bring horses, um, three year old geldings from the four sixes ranch. And you have a lot of time slots that you have to work your horse and you'll go through two different rounds in the round pin. And it's about an hour and a half of actual work time. You have rest periods, things like that. And you also have a pin wrangler that helps you with your equipment and as an assistant, if you need. And then the third day, you have a single round in the round pin, and then you do rail work, and then you run your horse through an obstacle course that most domestic horses would never dream of going through. So uh, it's, it's a challenge, and it really puts you in the hot seat to see if, you, uh, if you've got the skills to take a horse and in three days make it a rideable, usable partner. So it's an amazing competition. It's been around for a long time, and I was honored enough to come in as a wild card and to compete in Fort Worth. And so it was, it was amazing. It really was. It really was. And, and for the horses and for horses, people that, that are wondering, you're no stranger to, to the horse world. You've been involved in horses and, and, tr you know, training horses for over 20 years and all different uh, avenues. So in all the different avenues that you do train, as far as, you know, like the, the Mustang, wild Mustangs like that, what is the most, uh, challenging that you've run across? Uh, truly the horse training side of it's really easy. It's the people training that can be a little <laughs> difficult. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I've had such an incredible path and just horses have paved the way for me. And I've 
been really grateful to grow up with a supportive family. And I had an incredible mom who was a great coach and an educator and somebody who was a teacher. And, and so I was lucky because I was able to have exposure to a lot of different type of horses. So when the Mustang makeover kind of popped onto the scene back in about 2007, you know, 2008, it was right up my alley because it was problem solving, cold starting, working wild horses, and then doing a competition. And I really love competition. I, I love to thrive in a competition and I've got, I've got nerves of steel. So <laughs> I enjoy it. I, tr I truly do enjoy it. And I love to help people see that anything's possible. And uh, I love to make an audience go, wow, how did she do that? That was amazing. Well, and you, and you did, and you did well. You picked up, you got three titles in that. In that yeah. So, I mean, you over, yeah, you know, you could have told me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that a wild horse would have changed my life. And I would have laughed at you because <laughs> I was a quarter, like a quarter horse person through mm -hmm. and through. And, and uh, man, it's, it's opened up so many opportunities. And we've done some incredible, fun, beautiful, brilliant things you know, and, and so I'm just so grateful to the Mustangs truly. And, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today without them. So I'm very grateful. And going back, you know, you grew up in Arizona riding horses. So tell the folks that don't know about your background, kind of how you, you came up involved in horses as far as, uh, competing and moving yourself from uh, a competitor into a trainer, into a clinician. Yeah. So I grew up at a really young age, competing at a young age you know, hitting Jim Cannas and fun days, uh, little jackpots, things like that. We were riding, you know, barrel horses and we roped a little, barely, you know, but we roped and we were pretty, there was three girls in my family. There's actually six kids all together in my family. A lot of people don't know that I have brothers, but I do have three older brothers. And, and I came from a really supportive family. So my mom would haul us girls up and down the road and and uh, so we rodeoed growing up in Jim Cannon, and we I, we had a pretty high level at a very fast and young age. I mean, we were doing some pretty big things, and and then as I graduated high school, I then got involved with all the extreme cowboy races. That was kind of up my alley, and that's how I met Craig Cameron, and and truly that's how I got the name Extreme Wileen. Was I was at a an, a cowboy race and. He said, "I've never seen somebody run that fast," and so he 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 just dubbed me Extreme Wileen, and it kind of stuck. <laughs> you know, just stuck in there. So, uh, and then, you know, I just, I, I dove into the Mustang makeover world and it su like surprised and surpassed anything I could have ever imagined. And the horses are the most incredible teachers and I've just learned so much and come so far. And then from there, you know, once I did, uh, it was my fourth Mustang makeover. I had a little horse named Rembrandt. And at the time I was being filmed for a documentary that was then, published and done two years later and it went on to Netflix and that was Wild Horse Wild Ride. For those who have seen it, it's an incredible documentary. If you haven't watched it, it's still on Amazon Prime. It is not on Netflix, but you can either order it through Amazon Prime or watch it through their video series. It's a fabulous documentary. It gives you some background on the Mustang Heritage Foundation and how the competition works. Essentially, you get a wild Mustang, you have a hundred days to break it and train it and show it in the competition and then it's auctioned off. So. Uh, it, it wraps up that story about that. And so that was kind of where it started. And then when the film came out, people would say like, I just want to come ride with you. I've never seen anybody work a horse your way. I've never seen anybody have so much fun or you're so extreme. Like I want to see and learn from you. How do I do that? And so I had already been teaching clinics, but it really took off once I kind of put myself out there in the public eye. And then, and then I went from, competing to judging the event and judging other events. And I've judged multiple different events, everything from rodeo queen contests to makeovers and other judge trail events, things like that. So it's, it's kind of segued into what I've always wanted to do, which is to be a motivator and a coach and to help people and to be teaching not only the horses, but as I said earlier, the people, <laughs> the people are who really, really need the help. So, uh, so yeah, so I've just really had a blast and had a great time and, made a lot of memories and I have fantastic friends and it's just been a whirlwind, but it's been a wild ride, but I would not change it for one thing. It's been great. It's, it's a, uh, it's been interesting. It's been interesting to watch, interesting to see, um, for those looking to, uh, to find out where you're going to be for your clinic, you're, you're at a clinic right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for those looking to find out, uh, you know, where you're going to be, if they want to go ride with you, they want to do a clinic and stuff like that, where is the best place to send them to uh, see what you have going on? 
Yeah, so you can check out my website at extremewylene.com. It's pretty simple. It's all one word. So you just jump on there. Or I also have every social media handle there is. So Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We try to put up information as we go. And, you know, I always tell people, come ride. Don't be intimidated. I, I really enjoy riding with students and, and teaching and coaching. And I'm, I kind of have a little bit of a braggadocious way of saying it, but you're going to have the most fun at my clinic and you're going to learn a lot and you're going to laugh and you're going to push yourself out of your comfort zone and you're going to walk away with tools and techniques and some knowledge. So come ride. We'd love to have you. All right. So we'll send them to your website, have them check it out. And uh, we appreciate you spending time to visit with us. We know you're busy uh, at the clinic. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you down the road and have good luck. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And yeah, we'll see you down the trail. Anybody who wants to come, come on. Let's do it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. The fun with the fun with live TV. My face looked really weird for a minute. I was like, what did I do? Did I turn into a blue waffle? I don't know what happened. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, no, I think that I think that uh, was called Halloween Kills. Um um it's, it's probably in the tubes um i got a dog wedding right here so let's talk about this uh dog wedding who wants at first i thought somebody married their dog when i was like that's weird but it's 2021 so you know stuff's different so here's what we got uh chicago uh, okay so chicago uh, is attempting a world record for the largest dog wedding ceremony. Organizers of the world record attempt in Chicago said they were hoping to gather more than 178 canine couples to break the record for the world's largest dog wedding ceremony. How do they know these dogs are married? How, are they, how do you marry a dog? How does a dog consent? What paw does the ring go on? I mean... I don't, I don't get it. Um, what else do they say? Let's see, Leslie, she's the chair of the Villa Park Community Focus on Unifying Neighbors Commission of Fun. She said she previously <laughs> participated in the 2008 record in Oak Park, Illinois. So she, she tried that one uh, with 87 canine couples falling short of the record of 178 which was set in Littleton, Colorado in 2007. Was, were they smoking in 2007, Colorado? Because it sounds like it. Because who was sitting around the table going, hey, man, let's see how many dogs we can get married. You want to see how many dog couples we can marry? I bet there's a record for that, man. That's what happened. It's Colorado. Uh, let's see. Allison says she wanted to see Illinois take the record on Sunday, Villa Park. President slated to officiate. He's officiating the dog wedding. Does he speak dog? Don't know what style that would speak. Would that be, what kind of style of speak would it be? Would it be doggy style? Is that the speak he is? I don't know. Uh, Allison said the pet owners whose dogs have mates to marry can participate in a round of doggy speed dating. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Who's marrying their dogs? It's almost as bad as a sheep on the loose. A lamb on the ram, a ram on the lamb. Escape sheep leads Texas officers on a highway foot chase. A pair of sheep got loose from their pen in Texas and led animal care officers on a foot chase that at one point ended up on the highway. City of San Antonio Animal Care Services said officers responded to multiple calls Sunday about sheep on the loose on Highway 151. Uh, the post said the sheep became spooked when the officers approached them and fled across the road. The officers were able to form a human wall to guide the sheep. Why do they need a wall? You know, walls, that's, you don't need a human wall. I thought that was illegal in 2021. Uh, to guide the sheep away from the road, the animals hopped over a nearby retaining wall. Aha! The wall wasn't tall enough. And ended up on the highway. Uh, the police blocked the westbound traffic and the animal carrier guy the shot off the road. After a little more coaxing, our would-be shepherds corralled the sheep. In the fenced off courtyard, the sheep were re reunited with their owners, not showing any signs of injury or stress from the time on the loose. I mean, no stress. Probably freaking out running across the highway. 
Uh, beer. Who drinks it? You drink it. All right, let's see. Samuel Adams, their latest potentest beer is illegal in 15 states. Think about that. The latest beer from the Boston Brewer, Samuel Adams Beers, uh, with a price tag of $240. $240. 240 per bottle. It's illegal in 15 states. They said with the 12th version of the Utopia Brands, which brewery the brewery rolls out every two years, we'll roll it October the 11th at a price of $240 for a 25-ounce bottle or 25.4 you gotta get the, you get the point 0.4 just just the point 0.4 just the tip you gotta have that in there the beverage contains 28 percent alcohol 28 percent more than five times the average strength of u.s beers making it illegal to sell in alabama arkansas georgia idaho missouri mississippi montana north carolina new hampshire oklahoma oregon south carolina utah vermont and west virginia I didn't see Texas, so I guess you can get it here. Uh, they pioneered this barrel-aged process almost 30 years ago, continuing their time-honored tradition. Since their introduction in 2012, they've explored a bunch of stuff to figure out that for 240 bucks, you're not going to remember where your money went because you're going to be drunk. Uh, we may or may not have a Halloween trailer somewhere. If we don't, go to Pepper Stewart Show on Facebook and look at it because the trailer... The new trailer for Halloween Kills is there. It's on uh, Pepper Stewart Show on Facebook. Also, go to Pepper Stewart Show and uh, check it out, pepperstewart.com, and buy a T-shirt or something. It's getting cold. Hoodies. Everybody needs a hoodie. we got a bunch of hoodies on there. Somebody's going to want one. I don't know who. So check that out. Um, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the Texas Cowpokes. Texas Cowpokes, uh, they do a day work challenge where – uh, it's kind of like the events that happen during day working. So you go in there and you sort a cow, a numbered cow, put it in a pen. You throw a rope on one and the rope breaks off. So you're not really roping one. It's just like a breakaway deal. So you throw a rope on there and break it away. And then you got another cow that runs that across the arena and you throw a rope on it. And then whoever has the best time wins stuff. Uh, they've been giving away buckles. They've gave away some halters, some ropes. Uh, I heard to the grapevine that their next event they're going to do a first place buckle for all three events. So you're going to have a first place buckle for all three events plus your cash. And they're so check that out. Look them up on uh, Facebook, Texas Cowpokes. Do that. Also, while you're looking on there, check out the Texas Grease Paint Tour. See what they're doing. They got events coming up. I think they're going to do some more bull team stuff. And uh, as today is the giving day, North Texas Giving Day. Where you give stuff, you give your, your donation, North Texas Donation Day. Um, I'm probably going to say it wrong. Heroes, something heroes. Heroes United. Heroes United. Look it up. Heroes United. Uh, they uh, go around every Christmas yes. distributing toys uh -huh. to the kids. But not just anybody distributes these toys. It's Spider-Man and Spider-Woman. There is that. It's 2021. You can have both. And they distribute toys to the kids in the neighborhood, so be sure and uh, and help them out. And then also look up the Charity Foundation. They are a, uh, a nonprofit also out of North Texas that help out with uh, cancer patients where all your money that you send to them goes directly to, to the care. It doesn't go to the patients themselves. It goes to pay the bills. So check that out. And then also the Charity Foundation Celebrity Cutting event will happen the first Saturday in December along with the uh, Yellowstone cast. Some of the cast will be there cutting in that, so check it out. And uh, there's always a lot of events, stuff happening with it, so you want to check it out. Be out there in Fort Worth. Don't forget your North Texas uh, donate days. Do it. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get on the highway and drive around. <laughs>